Hi guys and welcome. On this video we're doing an interview with Paul Doyle from Herwood College in Coventry. We're speaking to Paul about his work with using the Jayco robot from Canova. So if you want to see how this one arm robot has been assisting people with upper body disabilities then please stay tuned. Hi guys, I'm Philip English from RoboPhil.com. Now on this video, we're speaking to Paul Doyle, who is the Head of Access Research and Development at the Herwood College in Coventry, England. Herwood is a national FE college for young people with disabilities. Robotics is one of the many areas covered by Paul's team. We're speaking to Paul about the work with Jayco, the assistive robot arm for upper body disabled persons in wheelchairs. Right, hi guys, so we're here with Paul Doyle today, who's Head of Access Research and Development at Herwood College in Coventry, England. Herwood is a national FE college for young people with disabilities. Robotics is one of the many areas covered by Paul's team. We're speaking to Paul about his work with Jacob, the assistive robot arm for upper body disability persons in powered wheelchairs. Hi guys, and welcome to the RoboPhil's uh, video blog. Uh, today we're here with Paul, so Paul, please can you introduce yourself? Hello there, uh, my name is Paul Doyle and I'm the uh, Access Research and Development Manager at Herowood College. Brilliant, thank you Paul, it's a pleasure to be here today. So to start with, um, we just want a quick overview of the Jayco robot. Okay, well the Jayco robot is a robotic assistive device for people with upper limb disabilities. It usually fits to their wheelchair and they control the arm through their wheelchair control and it enables them to do things that they were unable to do before. Brilliant, thanks Paul uh, for the quick overview of Jayco. Uh, the next question I got, uh, how did you get into robotics? Well it's a long and complicated story but uh, I come from the Midlands so originally I worked in the automotive industry and there we had long experience of using uh, robotics for spot welding. Uh, then making the transition into education I took that experience with me and for a number of years I ran a robot enrichment at Herald College where students built small robotic kits and got their heads around the concept of robotics. Right, brilliant Paul. Uh, so yeah, can you tell me uh, a little bit more about Jayco? Yes, well we've been using the Jayco here at Herald College uh, for our students and it's a seven degree of freedom robot with a thumb and two fingers and we're primarily using it to help students to carry out activities that they ordinarily can't undertake. So looking at things like picking up drinks, uh, identifying uh, tasks that the student wants to do like loading and unloading a dishwasher or a washing machine. Uh, so we're actually going through the process of identifying what the student likes to do and seeing whether Jayco can facilitate that. Okay, Paul, uh, so what do the users like about Jayco? Well, we found that the students actually like doing things for themselves. Some robots are based around about providing and taking information, but this is very much a hands-on, can-do sort of robot. Our students actually like the, uh, the uh, um, ability to be able to manipulate things for themselves. So what kind of work have you done together uh, with the JK? Well, working with the students, we've identified that the JCO is a very complex piece of machinery. And to use it effectively, there are a number of issues that we need to address beforehand. And the students are really helpful in identifying that because often the student's wheelchair belongs to the NHS. So we need to negotiate with the NHS so that we can actually fix it to their wheelchair. Then the student needs to know how to control it. There are lots of different methods of being able to control JCO. And it's the student who drives that agenda forward really. They tell us what the best solution is for them. So when you show the robot working, what sort of re re reaction do you get? Uh, usually it's, it's a single word reaction, it's wow. Uh, the students are looking at something that uh, looks a bit science fictiony really, but uh, the second reaction that we get is when it's on the wheelchair and uh, they start to look at the potential in terms of them being able to do things for themselves. So there's another wow, but it's a slightly different one. So have you done lots of research with, with Jayco and can you, can, can you tell me about this? Certainly yes. Um, Herowood has the luxury of having an occupational therapist uh, as part of our team. So we've been working with our OT to identify the tasks uh, and how to achieve those tasks with a number of students. Uh, we've looked at sort of the, the physical means of getting it onto a wheelchair. So that takes a bit of research. There are no two wheelchairs really the same and no two users the same. So we've had to spend a lot of time researching uh, with manufacturers and suppliers about how to integrate the Jayco onto a wheelchair at all times also being aware that the student wants to be part and centre of the process. So it's a bringing together of lots of different components to create a solution that meets that person's needs. So uh, what is the goal for Kenova Robotics uh, and Jayco with its users? 
I think the overarching goal is to provide a level of independence to people with upper limb mobility impairments, so that to make people more independent and able to uh, carry out tasks and activities independently for themselves. Brilliant, that's great Paul. So uh, what are some of the most exciting and memorable moments you've had with Jayco? I think one of the most exciting issues that sort of stands out in my mind is that one of our users uh, attended a 70th birthday party for his grandfather and uh, during the process of the, e during the evening um, they raised a glass to celebrate his birthday and this young man was able to participate in a social event by raising a glass to his granddad. We weren't expecting that because the JCO normally is sort of a tool to facilitate I say workaday things, eating and drinking, but sometimes drinking is part of a social uh, event and uh, our student was able to participate in that event and he, w he was very pleased and very excited to tell me about it. Yeah, no, that, that sounds really amazing. So yeah, he was there and, he, and he, he raised the glass as well, you know, Absolutely. to fit in with there, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, brilliant. So other than lifting, what sort of other things have you seen the JCO do? Uh, well, being that we're based in a college, some of our students follow arts-based uh, courses, and one of our students was actually using uh, a whiteboard pen uh, and drawing on the whiteboard with the JCO arm. So uh, it was extending his palette, so to speak. He's an individual with impaired mobility. He could move his fingers, but not his arms. And by using the JCO with a whiteboard pen, he was able to draw much larger pictures. It was something that he'd like to do, and it's something that he did do. Wow, that sounds very impressive again. So he was interacting like with the class as well and with the boards and he can extend stuff. So Yeah, he was, he's an artist and he wanted a bigger palette, so to speak, and this was a tool that enabled him to do so. Wow, okay. Uh, so what, what sort of games do you play with your robot? Uh, well, here at the college, uh, our students play a game of boccia and it's a type of adapted type of bowls. Uh, and we've been using the Jayco to pick a ball up and ro uh, roll it down a piece of guttering so that uh, the, the students can knock the uh, other students' balls away from the puck. Okay, it sounds like a very, very fun game. Yes, it is a very fun game. However, because the Jayco can learn um, uh, fixed positions, one of the issues that we find is once it's got the optimum position, the student, all they, all they need to do then is just repeat that. And uh, unfortunately, they win every time. I oh, see. So just press the same button again and again. Oh, very clever. Very clever robot. <laughs> Absolutely. I think we're going to need to change the rules of Boccia to uh, account for Jayco. <laughs> brilliant. Brilliant. So how do you program Jayco uh, and how does it work? Okay, well, Jayco is programmed through a uh, bespoke piece of software that runs on a PC. Uh, we connect the PC to Jayco using a USB connection and we change all of the parameters uh, through the software and then download it to the Jayco. Then the student can uh, try out the, the machine and if there's any tweaks required, they tell us what's needed and we then obviously go through the process again. Okay, is it, is it quite easy to use and set up or...? Um, if you understand sort of the, the, the nature of um, Cartesian space, if you know that the, uh, the robot moves in three degrees of freedom, uh, seven degrees of freedom, but in three dimensions, it's relatively straightforward. Okay, well, that's good to, hear. good to hear. So are there any challenges that, that you get from programming the, the, the JCO robot? Or? I think the challenges arise from working with people with disabilities because the JCO uh, is a relatively uh, powerful tool. We just need to make sure that what we do is safe. What we can do with the JCO is program a, a safety zone around the individual so that we can't go anywhere near the individual's face. So if they've got something sharp in JCO's hands, it's not going to cause any damage. So you mentioned earlier that you used to teach uh, an enrichment module. Um, who were a few of your idols or inspirations that made you wa want to get into robots? I think uh, one of my standout idols is a chap called Rodney Brooks. Uh, he's the guy who's responsible for the Roomba robotic vacuum cleaner. And I think what he's done is he's actually taken the concept of sort of complex machines and actually made them do something useful. Uh, now, some people might think that uh, vacuuming the floor isn't useful, but believe you me, it is. Uh, and also being able to do something useful within a, a reasonable price bracket. I think he's got the, the package, and I think that necessarily is a, is a way of moving forward with robotics, and we'd like to be able to adopt that process at Harrowood. Um, okay, Paul, so what, what do you think the big misconceptions are about, about the JCO? I think there are two major misconceptions with Jayco. One is the speed. Uh, Jayco is a machine that moves at a specific speed for safety reasons, so it'll never be as fast as a human pair of hands. Uh, the second misconception is that Jayco works automatically. At the back of Jayco is the user. The user is always in control of the Jayco, and as a consequence, it will not do things for you. You will do things for yourself. Right, so the, so the, the users there are expecting it to sort of go and pick the glass up and, 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 and drink the glass straight away, but... 
Absolutely. And I think what, what we're looking at here now is a device that's steerable by an individual. A lot of people think of robotics as things that do things automatically. Well, this is a robotic manipulator rather than a robot in essence. So what, what are some of the important skills that you need uh, working with Jayco? Well, to fix a Jayco into a user's wheelchair requires a multiple uh, suite of skills. There are mechanical skills, electrical skills and electronic skills. People also need to be able to program to a certain degree. But I think one of the most important skills are, is rather uh, being able to work with somebody on an individual basis, having people skills. Because as I said earlier, the, the robot is a technology and the technology has to fit into people's lives. Brilliant. So what advice do you have for young, inspiring roboticists? I'd say look at the, the world uh, outside industry. Um, Jayco is a device that sits within the world of special needs and robotics will be forming a part of many people's lives, not just in sort of the industrial uh, aspects that we think in terms of car factories and automotive uh, spaces. There will be robots everywhere, so look around you, there will be robotics opportunities everywhere at some point. So are, th are there aspects of working with Jayco that you can transfer to other ro robotics? Absolutely. Uh, Jayco is a seven degree of freedom robot and not that dissimilar to the robots that you would find in industry. So there's a whole raft of skills and knowledge that you can transfer between both domestic robots uh, such as Jayco and the industrial robots that you'd find in any major car factory. And, and this would be a whole host of mechanical skills, software skills, uh, ele electrical skills? I think, yes. I mean, robotics really is a multidisciplinary skill set, really. So you have to have all of those skills to enable you to actually deliver a, you know, a, 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 a solution to an individual requirement, whether that be eating and drinking or uh, assembling a car. Brilliant. Cheers, Paul. So what is the future uh, for you and Jayco? Uh, we're intending to continue using Jayco at Harrowwood College. It's very much part of our curriculum for people with uh, upper limb mobility issues. Uh, what we'd like to do is actually have more Jayco in the UK and at Harrowwood, uh, but I think what we need to do now is find a me mechanism whereby we can drive the cost down. Jayco is still quite an expensive piece of kit. For people that are interested uh, in finding out more, uh, do you have any social media networks? Yes, we do. We have a Facebook page, we have a Twitter account and we have the college website. Brilliant. Cheers, Paul. Uh, and wrapping up, uh, what do you think the future is for robotics? Uh, I think from a, a Harrowwood perspective, it'll be some time before humanoid robots are intelligent enough to carry out personal care tasks and safety-based uh, tasks um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an affordable and manageable way. So I think one of the futures that we're looking at is perhaps the remote operation of devices by pilots based in another part of the world. Um, we're looking at perhaps uh, personal care tasks being carried out by remotely operated pilots and then uh, when they need to do something that's relatively straightforward and safe then reverting back to robotic control. I think that uh, is potentially a way of driving down the cost of delivering personalised robotic based services. Brilliant, so thanks very much for your time today Paul, uh, demonstrating the Jayco, it's been very interested uh, and very much appreciated, thank you. Thank you. Brilliant, thanks guys and I hope you enjoyed the interview and I want to say a big thank you to Paul for his time and the interview which has given us a more in-depth insight into how Jayco is being used. It is very much appreciated. Now if you like this interview and want to see even more robot news, reviews and tutorials then please hit the subscribe button to keep up to date with the latest videos that come out. Please have a look below as well where I put links relating to these videos as well as other information about Herwood College and the Jayco robot. If you have any questions or want to see a product review of a particular robot, then please write me a message in the comment section and I'll see what I can do. Thanks guys and I'll see you next time.